And this card says you get to do that. So I, I think, you know, yeah, you're, you're right. But making all these other random zombie makers better, you know, we've seen before, like, um, you know, we had Mona the Unhollowed. That card was playable in the last, when it was printed. And we have, uh, it's not Mona the Unhollowed, it's... Um, uh. I know what you're talking about. Jesus bidding? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, like, and it, it has madness instead of flashback. Well, that's pretty relevant here, and then you can just tap them, you know, hey, I'm going to tap this for, you know, five mana, right, and make three zombies, and I'm also going to, you know, draw a card. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, this, this, I see, like, this card kind of working in tandem a lot with, like, something like Relentless Dead. You you pitch a Relentless Dead, you play uh, another Relentless Dead, it dies, you get your Relentless Dead back, or your Crypt Breaker dies, like... They they all kind of like feed into each other. Like you're you're already using, you're investing mana to get something back or something out of it. Yeah, there's a lot of power tacked onto this one one mana creature. Yeah. So, so but, there, you know, I think people have been disappointed so far by zombies, but this is the kind of card that can make even your mediocre zombies like a lot better. So. Yeah. Um. I mean, this even works with things like you know you have to take a look Diagraph Colossus and yeah. and like Prized Amalgam is really like interesting yeah. to see come out of it as well. You know, you could discard that early and then you'll get paid back on it later. I, I think it's interesting that like I think you know if you look at it, they've really told you that some of these uncommons they put into shadows, you actually need to play those cards. Stitchwing Scab, Ghoul Steed. I, you're playing those cards, I think, and I think that's pretty interesting. You know, if you're playing the full-on zombies deck, like, all right, I'll tap two black to discard my Stitchwing Scab to get a zombie, and then later I can bring my Scab back, and then that's how I can trigger my Prize Amalgam. Uh, and I think that's interesting. You know, it, it's very synergistic. Uh, it definitely is hard to beat in the long game because we still don't have a good graveyard. You know, like cleaner. No, we so don't. It'll be interesting to see if someone can actually build that deck to just be this long, grindy, endless ranks of the undead style sort of uh sort yeah. of deck so and along with that then we can talk about the next card here yeah which as i'm talking about these cards working together i think i'm getting more and more sold on this card i, I mentioned i was sort of down on it at the beginning uh this is dark salvation just uh xx black for a sorcery that says target player puts x22 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield then up to one target creature gets minus minus or minus one minus one until end of turn for each zombie that player controls um so beyond the strange wording of this, because you can target players. So yeah. if you if you're like really excited about this card in EDH, when do you get to play this in like team formats? We're like, my buddy over here is getting a bunch of zombies, <laughs> and then that creature's dying. Uh, but in standard, I, I looked at this and said, man, the rate on this is really bad. You know what I mean? Um, you have to pay five mana to get two zombies. But as you guys said to me when I said that, you're like, well. This is just a removal spell. And, Morgan, you mentioned possibly a one-mana removal spell if you already have a bunch of zombies in play, which yeah. is something I wasn't thinking about. Uh, but even getting, like, one zombie and then, like, mi- like, minus two, minus two, minus three, minus three. Hilariously, this card feels like the better modal card than Collective Brutality. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Str- strangely enough, yes. Um, but, yeah, you know, we're talking about this deck that's like, hey, you know, build a board presence. Well, this is, you know, one of the payoffs for, like, building a board presence. Um you know, if you can have two, uh, two to three zombies, like you know, early enough, um, which is you know, you know, perfectly feasible with how you know the the you know zombie deck is kind of you know shaping out. You know, this becomes a very powerful, you know, removal spell, and, and it scales late game as well. So uh, it's 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 fairly interesting. Wait, uh, am I reading this right? Because I just read this card again. So the creature only gets minus one minus one for each zombie they control. That player controls. No, the the player that you've targeted with this spell. Correct. So how many zombies I control. Right. I'm targeting uh, me. That's okay, why I said okay, the, the wording okay. on this card is strange. Okay. Because you can give the tokens to someone else, and it's weird. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I was, I was reading that like, wait, so they only get minus one. For, so like if you... yeah, You do know. not want to have this card stuck in your hand when your opponent ever calls you. Let me just say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's great. I'll get all those zombies. The flavor well. fail there is beyond recognition. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a car, I don't expect a card like this like break standard, but it's definitely much more of like a strong role player than I think I was giving it credit for. So Yeah, you, you don't have to exit for much. Yeah. yeah, you can do it for one and still have it pretty powerful if you already have a board. Nice. All right. Oh man, I, I know this one probably isn't on here. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to double check. Haunted Dead. Uh, that one's definitely on here. Um, do a Graph Harvest. Yeah, I I look at that card. So Graph Harvest, one black enchantment. Zombies you control have menace, and then it's uh, pay three generic black exile creature card from your graveyard. Put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. 
Um, I so this is uh, this feels to me like it, so if the deck that we're talking about like is is a deck. Um, I don't know if this is you know the 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 other one drop that you play, but I could see this being like a sideboard card. Uh, potentially uh, for like uh, against control or something like that because it's it's a way to you know take advantage of you know if if your creatures are dying um, a way to kind of recoup that cost it is expensive um, it, but I mean pseudo evasion you know shouldn't be yeah menace is it can be pretty powerful and um, I don't think we should ne- necessarily like discount that and like giving it to every zombie you control is pretty you know effective um, I don't know I, I look at it and like. It feels like maybe it's just like a, a misnomer, like a trick, a red herring, is as it were. But I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, you know. Honestly, I, I do agree with you. I, I was sort of, uh, I, I sort of skipped over this, but you know, every, everyone having menace and then being able to make more tokens is, is pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if it's a main deck card. It is the kind of thing that can just be an irrelevant uh, ability, but. Uh, yeah, I you know I I would rethink it. I you know it's interesting that we've had you have uh, cards like this tend to be very good in limited, right? Um, because you know that recursion. Uh, we have another one in limit. You know, there was a bomb in limited in dragons, which was corpse left. Oh yeah, and that card was like pretty much unbeatable and really didn't see much standard play. Now it's also an enchantment, so it, it falls under the hard to build a deck around it with Drogue's command running around, mm-hmm. but. It's certainly worth looking at because when these cards tend to be so good and limited, there's a good chance they're good in standard too. So yeah, all right, Morgan, I'll, I'll, I will, I will go. Hmm, it's just one mana. Like that, that like that's that's the thing. <laughs> it sounds like the worst bit of peer pressure. It's just one mana, man. It's, it's just, just one, one mana. mana. Like, it, it feels like one mana again. It doesn't necessarily affect the board immediately, but eh. Sure. All right, now we can move on. Go ahead, Dave. All right, next card is Haunted Dead. Uh, three generic and a black for a uh, two-two zombie. When Haunted Dead enters the battlefield, put a one-one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. It also has uh, generic and a black. Discard two cards. Return Haunted Dead from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Uh, so it kind of has a similar ability to what Goldsteed and mm-hmm. some of the scabs and that we see in blue that allow you to discard cards to bring them back. Uh, I don't know. This is a pretty sweet card. Uh, gives you. You know, nice little board presence when you play it. Um, I, I think Morgan and I were both thinking, we can't wait to put this in Battle Box. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a sweet <laughs> Battle Box card. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I tell you what, like, because, uh, I mean, Battle Box is an interesting thing because you have a lot of cards in it that, you know, bring cards back from your graveyard. Um, so discarding isn't necessarily a, is a downside. You, you know, have a, a somewhat of a likelihood to, you know, get something that's going to nab something back. Um and uh, yeah, I mean this card's sweet. Like this is an awesome two for one, and it, and it keeps coming back, so it'd be very annoying. Um, so you you kind of have to figure out a way to deal with it. But yeah, this card's sweet. Yeah, I think it's just a, a great card in limited in general. Um, could possibly see constructive play if there is a reason um, that you'd want to fill up your graveyard. I mean, delirium or something. Like I said, this is another card that triggers like you know, um, prize amalgam. Yeah. So that alone yeah. makes it possible. I, I, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, so we we have already you know kind of stated that what, what was a ghoul steed uh, was was the one that yeah, I I think like you may even want to play this you know over over ghoul yeah, you're steed. Not, you're not wrong. Uh, just for the sheer fact that you get a one one flyer, like you you get something that is relevant um, that has evasion already, and like I mean, if you're already and this is something like you know you you discard to your. Your salvation, uh, not your uh, salvation. Yeah, you you discard to your crypt breaker or what have you, and like bring back later. I, I think the interesting thing with this, like versus the, some of the other cards we talked about with a similar ability, is like you can bring this back and block. You know, the spirit can block yeah. that turn, even though this comes into play tapped. So being able to have the you know kind of instant speed blocker that can kind of come that's out very of true as well. That's that's actually pretty relevant. So um, you know. yeah, I. I also I just want to talk about as from from the guy who loves the flavor. I love the flavor of this card. Like there's there's a number of short stories and there's an H. E. Wells story I'm thinking about very specifically where a person experiments with like um, astral projection. Or if you're familiar with like the Insidious films, right? Is, is Insidious the one I'm thinking of? No idea, man. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the horror. Or the guy who play, the guy the guy who plays uh, our uh, Night Owl. <laughs> I, maybe. Oh man! All right, everyone. I know um, who you're talking about, though. But anyways, uh, the idea is that you know, like, 
you have exited your body somehow, and then something else, some other spirit or some other being takes over the body. And if you look at the art here, like you definitely have like the original soul of this body is like, whoa, I, I kind of want to be back in here. What's going on? And I've got like the zombie too. So it's 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 good storytelling. I like it for flavor. So. Uh, I guess we'll move on here. Yeah, we probably talked too much about this random uncommon, but it's really sweet. <laughs> uh, the next one is dun 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 Liliana, the last hope. Which for someone who's the last hope, she's she's kind of tiny, you know, generic black black for a three uh, loyal to planeswalker. Now I know what you're thinking. You hear Liliana, you hear three <laughs> three CMC, you hear three loyalty, and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I like where this is going. It's, it's not it's not bad. But it's not Liliana of the Veil, so <laughs> sorry. Just, just take take your amps, which were at eleven, take them back down to about yeah. five or six. We we apologize that it's not busted, um, and, and I know how much busting makes people feel good, but <laughs> especially on Innistrad. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, plus one uh, up to one target creature gets minus two minus one until your next turn. Now that clause is important uh, because. As we've already mentioned, there's actually not a ton of things this will kill at the moment that are very highly played. But it does defend you, you know, defend uh, you know, from a Sylvan Advocate for that full turn cycle, which is pretty interesting. Um, I, I, it is relevant that you know, any, most anything, you know, one drop from the, the human's deck, it can, it can oh, that, effectively that is kill. True. That is true. Uh, which is you know, very, very nice. Uh, awkwardly, the, the only tribe it seems to effectively kill everything from? Spirits. Poor spirits. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, they're already dead. Let's be fair. <laughs> Uh, then minus two, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And I think this power, you know, this ability is really powerful because it's essentially, you know, draw a card. And it's one of those, like, draw a card from a pool where you know you're going to get the card. Yes, early in the game, this may not do very much. Uh, but it's the kind of thing where your three-drop Planeswalker continues to be relevant throughout the game when you draw it. And I think that's really, really important. It's something that Liliana the Veil was so good at. It's like, no matter when you drew it in the game your opponent was sacrificing a creature. So no matter when you draw this in the game, you're going to get a creature back. And honestly, the, the later in the game you draw it, the more likely you're going to get something super relevant back. Mm-hmm. Um, but on turn three, it also enables Delirium pretty aggressively. Very much so. Uh, and then it's Ultimate, which people are doing the math on this. I, I'm not going to do the math for you, but it's obscene. Uh, but at minus seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your end step, put X two two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is two plus the number of zombies you control. So... If you have no zombies in play, you get two. So that means the next turn you get four, and you get six, and then like... It, no, I'm sorry, I'm doing the math wrong already. So you get two, and then you get six. Because you got... Right, you got two plus... I can't do the math. I can't do this. No, Why am I trying to do this? It's all right. It's, it's four. Six. No, because it, it's X plus two. So that once you have four, then it's four plus two is six. Then you have ten. So the next turn it's ten plus two is twelve. So the next turn it's twelve plus two is fourteen. Oh, so you, you have, get that. Man. Yeah, it's, yeah it, the math on this is like... It's disgusting and crazy, and it, by turn blank you have infinite zombies, and your opponent should be dead by then. But uh, it's just important to note that you always get two, because I think I, I think a lot of people misread that at first. They were like, "Oh, so I have to have zombies?" No, you don't have to have any, and they just grow. Uh, <laughs> they keep coming. We had that uh, fake one that showed up uh, a little while ago. It's like minus seven, put fifty two two zombies to each other. This gets there pretty quick. It wasn't that far off. <laughs> yeah, you 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 were actually uh, that far off. Yeah. So exactly. it's just weird though that it's like it's minus seven and she's a three. So you have to tick up for four turns and then get to a fifth turn to activate it, and then the ultimate doesn't actually kill them for a number of other turns. So how often you're going to see this alt be effective and standard? It's, I I don't. We're not measuring this three drop planeswalker by its alt. Just make sure we're not doing that. Uh, the other two abilities are both good and relevant, and I, I expect this Liliana to see a lot of play. Yeah, I, I think that this is one of the sort of the, the linchpins in the uh, the uh, green black delirium deck that that may come of uh, Eldritch Moon being uh, being released. I feel like this is what you know, helps you enable it you know quite quickly, um, and uh, you know. Uh, definitely, uh, again, late game. If you're dumping a whole bunch of cards in your graveyard, you know, allows you to get threats that are you know relevant um, towards the late game, or you know, yeah, even in the even in the beginning. So I, I really like this card, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see kind of where it lands in standard. Yeah, a couple things I want to mention here. So you said that the the plus one ability doesn't kill much in standard. I'll tell you what, as a, a humans aggro player, I don't want to see this card ever. Yeah, but like, and Morgan <laughs> it said kills, it kills a lot of humans. Yeah, it kills everything. <laughs> again, if we're talking about the decks that are currently dominating standard, yeah, humans yeah, yeah. is good, don't get me wrong. Right. But it, it doesn't kill that many of the humans, and once you have any pump effect in play, it doesn't kill any of them. 
So well, it, it, it's more like the nail in the coffin. Like once they languish you, it. if they have this in play, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the minus two, like. If you're playing a Delirium deck, being able to go, like, you know, maybe plus one for a turn, and then you can go minus two, minus two, like, getting the Planeswalker in your graveyard is going to be huge. Yeah, because mm-hmm. pretty delirium. much all, it's, no matter what your graveyard looks like, it's probably almost always going to get you to Delirium. Right, right. So, yeah. Uh, it is, this card I definitely, like, underrated when I first saw it. Um, but um, the more and more I, I, I think about it and see people talking about it, I'm, I'm kind of uh, leaning towards being very powerful. So Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, just as a quick uh, a note uh, before we we go into anything else, why this is where we uh, I mentioned murder in passing, um, <laughs> which is kind of ominous when you say that out loud. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, it's kind of dark. A uh, murder got reprinted, so one uh, one generic black black destroy tiger creature instant speed. So boom, murder right there. Hey, it, it's all it's all play. The last time it was printed, you know, some decks just want access to a clean instant speed answer that says destroy whatever you want. <laughs> you you don't want that there. It's a creature. It's gone. So just one of those cards is important to go. Like we're not going to discuss it, but if you remember, like, how huh, what were rules posed in the format? Murder. Yep. Murder. Yeah, just just remember, murder. Strictly, most foul. Strictly, most strictly foul. worse. Heroes downfall. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Wizards, for making that happen. Making that be a thing. All right. Next card, Dave. You're up. Oath of Liliana. So uh, we finished the cycle. Yeah, we did it. So, <laughs> also a story spoiler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Liliana, uh, I guess, reluctantly joins the gateway. Uh, the 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 supposed theory is that you only see one of her hands in this picture because the other one's crossing your fingers. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, oath of Liliana, oath of Liliana, uh, two generic and a black legendary enchantment, just like the other oaths. Uh, when oath of Liliana enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. At the beginning of each end step, if a Planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Um, so it's obviously kind of a a bad edict effect. You know, a three-mana sorcery uh, edict isn't the greatest thing in the world. Um, however, uh, being able to get a zombie whenever you cast a Planeswalker is kind of nice. Uh, being able to, you know, defend the Planeswalker uh, Yeah, immediately. I, I actually really like this one because that, yeah. that offering of actual protection each time you know we could say the oath of gideon also offered protection but the fact that this one triggers every single time is uh, i think it's pretty relevant right um i like the flavor text on this one as well it says <laughs> i'll keep watch happy now <laughs> uh, uh it's better than chandra's so yeah yeah probably <laughs> um one thing i do want to mention that um that i i heard about was uh dark petition gets both liliana or oath of liliana so if you're playing these cards in your, you know, black deck, you can, uh, you know, just just get those. Yeah, just be a Liliana yeah. theme deck. Or, or if you just have these already in your hand, you can search something else and then play this with your your three black mana that you get off of uh, Dark Petition. So, yeah, uh, that's not irrelevant. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that'll come up. Yeah, and time. you know, anyone that's you know trying to uh, trying to protect your demonic packs from Dromoku's man command, you know, there you go. <laughs> you have another black enchantment you can play. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I this one is it's it's interesting. Uh, we'll we'll see how the format shapes up. I, I don't know that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, sure. we'll see what happens. Nice definitive just like, answer. Just like there. Any yeah. of the I other, don't know. Uh, just like any of the oaths that aren't Nissa. You know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, next card is Stromkirk Condemned. So that is the next card, but I have to say the art for prime questions is like <laughs> just horrifying, by the way. Oh yeah, no, I don't I don't like that. He's I don't like that one at all. He's supposed to tell you a secret. <laughs> He's supposed to tell you a secret. <laughs> so I I have to share a quick story. My my brother told me that he this is last week he went to a to an Asian restaurant and they, they were, I, I don't I say Asian because I don't know which type of food they were having, but he, he did say that they, they had a, a guy who was very soft spoken as their waiter. Uh, I take it back, it may have been hibachi, but he was so essentially going around asking people if they wanted something else to drink, but he didn't see the guy. And again, very soft spoken. He came right behind him, like it was just like, Would you like uh, any hot sake or hot tea? <laughs> like this and like whispered it right into it in my brother's ear. He's like he said he's never gone so rigid his entire life. He's like, uh no, thank you. And that's exactly what so Brian questions forever will be would you like uh, some hot sake or hot tea? <laughs> like, the guy in the chair is just like, ah! No, they do. Please don't do that right in my ear. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> I also like that he's got a really sweet hat. Oh yeah, he's got like the the the, the duck bill like sailor hat for some reason. Yeah, That's man. weird. He's styling. <laughs> he's gonna tell you some fashion secrets. <laughs> yeah, oh, that God. art, man, that art's great. Um, I just why well, I wish you would have pointed out that I didn't just see like a walking snuffle off against like. I'm that. sorry, yeah, I do. I that's the first like when I saw that art, I was like, nope, I don't want any of that. <laughs> um, so no, let's move on to a uh, to a uh, Stromkirk condemned. Uh, all right, uh, sorry, Stromkirk condemned. Uh, black black for a two two creature vampire horror. Um, discard a card. Vampires you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. And we did mention this card. Um. And I think we discussed how if, if – having seen the full set, I'm still not convinced that vampires will be strong enough. I am starting to agree with Dave, though. Based on cards like this that are black-black, vampires may just be mono-black if it's going to be a thing. Uh, this is by far one of the more powerful cards because it, you know, it, it can discard a card without paying mana. Um, and it also has a pump effect. Um, and it pumps itself. I think it's important. It doesn't say others. So you can attack with this card as well. So – uh, if that deck's going to be there and it's going to be madness based, I think this card is definitely one of the linchpins of it. I still don't know if that's good enough though. And the ability to only activate it once each turn, like I get it, you don't want someone to just be able to empty oh, their hand. I think it would be busted. <laughs> but not being able to like activate it again in response to something really does reduce your bag of tricks a little bit. So now this doesn't only count like this specific strong kick condemned, right? Oh yes, it's this ability. So, so if you have more than one out, I, yeah, but yeah. if you're living the dream. And it's great. I, is this the dream good. to live, though? I don't know. Do you see the other cards in this format? I'd rather put stuff in a moon. That's the dream I want to live in. <laughs> Not this. Not this weird, like, I don't know, archangel-looking stronger. <laughs> like, I don't know yeah. what's going He's on. He's got too many limbs, He's I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so like, uh, when, it, when I saw the creature type, Vampire Horror, I was just like... Okay, it probably has some kind of you know weird deformity because it's like <laughs> I just being... didn't notice the weird wing arms on the back. No, I didn't notice like it has three arms. <laughs> I I think it's implied that it has four, right? Isn't it implied that those are two extra arms on the back? I don't know. I've got I've got no idea. Too many limbs. Too many limbs. <laughs> There's only one leg that we. Can it see takes that. an emerald to make some. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I, I think card is you know it's going to it would be a role player if it sees play, but I could also just see it, that entire tribe seeing no play. No, oh, yeah. I think zombies looks better than vampires now, and I think it's and I think vampires if you looked at it point blank you'd say, but so many of these bandits cards are pushed to play, and I'd say no, you're, you're wrong, they're not. No. They, no one wants you to play these cards. Play fiery temper, I guess. Yep. Um, before we get to the next card, I just want to mention uh, succumb to temptation. It's a generic black, black, instant. Draw two cards, you lose two life. So it's an instant speed Night's Whisper, which is pretty sign important. Sign and blood. You're paying two black. It's instant speed, sign and blood. Uh, okay. I mean, I said Night's Whisper because it's it's just you. You draw the cards. Oh, okay. It's I guess. I guess. My Whatever. The same, same difference, I mean, for the most part. Um, but yeah, black doesn't really get instant speed card draw. So... Yeah, I, I saw this and I thought you know, the problem is, is it better right now than either Read the Bones or um, Painful no. Truths? No. Yeah. No, it's but not. it's an option. It's not, but uh, yeah, it's just interesting to point out because Black doesn't get this kind of effect. I, I do like it limited because it's the exact same mana cost as Murder, so you can <laughs> hold up Murder mana and then just draw cards. Right. So. Yep. All right. Uh, all right, so the real next card, uh, Tree. Road. <laughs> what? Road. Oh, the road to perdition. The road to the tree of perdition. <laughs> road to the tree of perdition. Uh, oh no, <laughs> tree of redemption. What happens? <laughs> You've been looking a little, little sparse. Apparently, yeah. uh, it's fall time. Aww. Yeah. Well, there's, there's some. Oh, those aren't leaves. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were things swinging on it. Oh wait. Uh, they were certainly left there. <laughs> they ain't leaves. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, tree of perdition. Uh, three generic and a black. For plant, it's a zero thirteen. Uh, it's the opposite of Tree of Redemption. Uh, it has Defender, and its tap ability says exchange target opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness. So Tree of Redemption exchanges your own life total. Uh, Correct. This one exchanges life. your opponent. You and, have thirteen life, and now. it conveniently puts an opponent at thirteen life, uh, which is the KO with Triskaidekaphobia. <laughs> Correct. Um, which is cool. Again, not possible in a painland format. Stop! Don't don't do it. Even the mono white humans deck randomly has four you know 
pain lands in it. Just don't don't do this to yourself. Um, I like to say that this is officially the Whomping Willow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, if you try to touch the little root in the front, it, yeah, it'll, it'll stop. It'll, yeah, it'll stop. Um, <laughs> is this good in uh, Two Headed Giant? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It's real good. Oh uh, gosh, Commander. Ooh, uh, it's pretty good there too. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. I think this card does have some applications, uh, and like Tree of Rede- or Tree of Redemption didn't really have those applications. But this card, you know, if you're playing it in, you know, you could play this in a couple interesting decks. I, I've seen people talk about bringing out of the sideboards where it can block for a bunch, and then like depending on what you're using in your deck, can slowly start wheedling your opponent down, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so, I don't know. People people were pretty excited about this card. I, I doubt it does anything constructed, but if you get Triska Decaphobia with this card, you're going to see it coming, and you're not going to be able to do anything, you'll be sad. <laughs> you're like, it's going to happen. Uh, oh, no, it's happening! <laughs> Alright, All right. let's, uh, let's try to, we've got two more here for black, and we're going to finish up another color here, so. Uh, the next card is Whispers of... Whispers of Emrakul? <laughs> Would you like some hot sake? Hot sake? Or some hot tea? <laughs> Uh, no, Would you like uh, two extra arms uh, or two extra legs? Yeah, everyone, everyone was Emrakul's like this, like, Steve, Steve. Uh, all right. Steve, turn off your phone. Steve, I'm thirsty. Steve, Steve, water. Steve, Steve, it's bedtime. Quit playing Pokemon Go and get me out of this moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Whisper of Emrakul, we talked a little bit about, is a uh, generic and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent discards a card at random. Unless, of course, you have Delirium, in which case it is an easier to cast... Uh, him to turn. <laughs> uh, oof. Um, yeah, we discussed this card. Like, you know, there are situations it could be very good, and discard a card at random effects are rough. Um, you know, it's really going to be able to see how how quickly can your deck hit Delirium. But if your deck is consistently hitting Delirium by turns, you know, two, three, or four, this card is is going to be devastating to some people. Especially there are certain control decks where this card could just be backbreaking where it's going to ruin their game plan and, and that i don't think that's necessarily fun but it's certainly i think playable yeah i don't like that this is a card yeah i think we're I all in that same boat I don't, yeah. I don't think it's actually great but but it's going to, there's going to be times where it's disgusting and you're going to hate it like no one feels good about this like if you're casting this card and you feel really good about your opponent discarding cards at random go play a different format <laughs> <laughs> but you you certainly are not going to feel good when you're like oh Oh, okay. Th- thanks, everybody. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I missed my you know third land drop or something, and can't play the game of Magic anymore. Like, I mean that that, that that's kind of thing that you know him to Tarok breeds. I mean, this is obviously you have to jump through some hoops, and um, there there you know uh, there aren't going to be decks that uh, can actively do that uh, with any sort of uh, consistency. Uh, so I think that's kind of the saving grace uh, of this card, like. Um, and most of the time, you know, your, your targeted discard effects are probably going to be more effective. Um, if, if there is, you know, a, you know, majorly consistent, you know, Delirium deck where consistently they can, you know, have Delirium turned on by, you know, turn three, then, you know, maybe this card becomes a bit of a menace, but, uh, um, it's not him. Uh, it's not, uh, what, what's the, the, the one card that you, you shared with us, Dave? Uh, the one that was just, you know, tar- oh. Mercadian Mask, it was like Spectre's Whale. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that either. It's somewhere in between, and um, we'll see if it actually is relevant within the format. Right. All right, so our last black card is uh, a Transform card. Voldaren Pariah. It's a three generic black black for a Vampire Horror. 3-3 three, three Flyer. Uh, has the ability, um, well, I guess first off, has Madness for black, black, black. Um. It also has sacrifice three other creatures, transform Voldaren Pariah, and transforms into Abolisher of Bloodlines, becomes an Eldrazi Vampire, 6-5 Flyer. When this creature transforms into Abolisher of, of Bloodlines, target opponent sacrifices three creatures. Um, so, was this one lost in the... <laughs> Is this one lost in the annals of time? or I don't know. I know that we've, we've brought this card up before. I don't know if we talked about it or not. Yeah, well, talking I, about it now, it's, it's certainly interesting. It's heavy black, and it has a really, really interesting f- flip condition and flip trigger. Like what, So I, I think it's very powerful. I don't, I don't know what the best way to use it is, though. 
Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, uh, you know, if you do de- decide to go the, the mono black uh, vampire's route, you know, you, you could play the, uh, what was the other card we talked about? The Strong Perk Condemned, right? Was that? That's, that was the pump one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can play that into uh, turn three, this, you know, with the madness. Um, yeah, or, or any of the other various vampires that have uh, discard effects you know, where you don't have to pay mana. I think I mentioned before, I like this one with Call of the Bloodline as well, um, because then you have tokens to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only thing I want to mention about this card is uh, Abolisher of Bloodline simply has, like, goat head. It's, no reason. That art is horrific. Uh, and the fact that it's not an Ojazi vampire goat that make any sense to me. It's it's knee has a mouth. Like you see that? Like its knee has fangs. I don't know, man. Yeah, a lot of All the sides messed up. A lot of the art in the side is just really messed up. It's so like, messed up. I want to know what happens to these things like this when like Emrakul's in the moon. So does her corruption just stop in general and then these things are just like like they regain sentience while still being like this be like I goat, can you talk and the goat's like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did this happen? Don't know. <laughs> you thirsty? Yeah. <laughs> how, how about you, knee? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, that, and that's called ba- that show's called Three's Company. <laughs> Vampires. <laughs> too many mouths to feed already. Oh yeah. man. Too many knees to feed. <laughs> yeah. It's still a mouth. It's fine. Oh man. Anyway, so what do we think of black? I think Black got a lot of interesting stuff. Black got some interesting stuff, and I, I'm afraid that a lot of the vampire stuff won't see play. Yeah, but. it kind of might fall flat. Zombies might have a hope. And then you got a good Planeswalker. That is true. Got a good Planeswalker. I think, so, the last Palooza, we kind of talked a lot about zombies isn't good enough. We'll see what happens in the next set. Do you think there's enough here to make zombies? Playable? I think I think you got to give it the scout, the try. Like you, yeah. you try to put it together. I, I'm more optimistic about a. I, I don't think it's an aggressive deck by any means, but I think I'm more. I think I think what they've tried to do with zombies is admirable and it's unique, uh, and I definitely think it has a better chance of being really successful than vampires does. Yeah, I I think uh, the cards are there. It feels like. Like, it feels like maybe we're just not seeing it now, but it feels like there, there could be something, like, just crazy that comes out. Like, I feel like Crypt Breaker is, like, a card that, like, is just waiting to be broken. Crypt broken? It, yeah, I get it. Yeah, just, yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> no, I But intended. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, that, that feels like a card that is, like, pushed. Like, like okay, yeah, this... I don't know. Like, I, I feel like the cards are there, and I, I think we may see something crazy break out. I, like, I just feel like I don't it, know. it could it's, happen. It's potential, yeah, definitely, definitely is. I don't disagree with you. So uh, that's enough for black. Let's uh, move forward then. So red, Mike, you start us off. Yeah. So I put one that's probably a bit of an outlier on here to start with, which is abandoned reason. This is two generic and a red for an instant. Up to two turret creatures each get plus one plus zero and gain first strike until end of turn. It also has a madness cost of generic and a red. Uh, now, the last time this card was printed, it was called Coordinated Assault, and it only cost a red. And it was almost single-handedly why a red heroic deck was able to function in Theros, because it got two heroic triggers, but it also made two creatures very, very difficult to beat in combat. And the reason I mention this here is because I think this is actually one of the more important madness spells if Red Black Vampires is to be a thing. Because the creatures in Red Black Vampires have to be able to fight through everything Bank Company is putting out there, all the things that have three toughness, because not enough of them have flying. They, just to be quite honest, not enough of them do. Now, imagine this card with Stromkirk Condemned, which we talked about in black. This starts to get kind of spicy. You know, discard this to make all my vampires get plus one, plus one, and then these two that you blocked like this now get plus two, plus one, essentially, and first strike. You're winning combat there. You have to play something as all-in as, like, Stencia Masquerade. You get to play a, a trick instead, uh, which also costs less than Stencia Masquerade. Because, I, I, you know, I don't think that card was close enough to be here. But this card, as a trick, is a blowout. Coordinated Assault was a blowout, especially in the early game where you can't always play around it. Like, you're just not going to block then. You're just going to take a bunch of damage. So, I, I think... This card, even if it's not like a ton in the main deck, you know, it, creature on creature, this card lets the vampires uh, deck attack sort of with impunity, and I, and I like it for that reason. I think it's just more of a limited card. But yeah, I, I agree with you, yeah. but and I already said I don't think Black Red Vampires is going to be a thing, but I think this card could be important. Mm-hmm. It could also never be seen again, and you'll have this on tape. <laughs> That's fine. You've made plenty of mistakes on tape. It's fine. 
I, mean, right, I, don't, I, said like way, I don't like the way that sounds, just so you know. But. Well, it's recording. <laughs> it is also on tape. That, and then, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, you're up. All right. Uh, Bedlam Revel... Sorry. Bedlam Reveler. Take two. That's kind of tough. Uh, cost six generic red red. Wow, eight man. That's I a, know, that's whew. crazy. It be it's like, only a three four. What? <laughs> Uh, Another it's a, bad it's a, red card. It's a devil horror. <laughs> Vanilla test failed. <laughs> yeah, devil horror. That that's kind of horrifying. Uh, so Bedlam Reveler costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Also has prowess. That's pretty good. Uh, and also has when it enters the battlefield, discard your hand, then draw three cards. So this card, um, I don't know that it'll see standard play just because. As we mentioned before, the blue red spells is kind of weak. Probably doesn't stack up well against you know what the format's going to be doing. Um, however, uh, I do like this card in modern, possibly. <laughs> uh, blue red Delver. I know I've, I've talked about that deck a lot. Um, I haven't played it in a while, but uh, one of the problems with that deck is it's it lacks a beefy creature uh, that is cheap enough to play. Um, I can survive Lightning Bolt, pretty much. That's pretty much what you're looking for. This being a 3-4, uh, dodges Lightning Bolt, dodges Abrupt Decay. Um, you know, dodges a lot of uh, common played removal that we see in Modern. Um, the ability of uh, being able to, to draw you three cards. Um, you know, you, it's possible to build the deck in a way that, you know, maybe you don't have many counter spells at all, uh, and you're playing a more proactive game where, you know, you can try to empty your hand, uh, or at least almost empty it. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like this card. You know, it, uh, it comes into play. You get to draw three cards. You get to fuel up. Maybe you get into big attack in the next turn. So, yeah, kind of like it. Yeah, I'm high. I'm high. I don't have much to add to what you said. I'm high in this card, too. I think it could be good in both modern and standard, I think. I think that draw three cards trigger is really powerful on a creature with a relevant body uh, and, and uh, ability as well. So... Uh, I'm excited to see what it can do. Um, I, I've got to turn around on this card. Uh, I wasn't initially impressed by it, um, but uh, I, I've come to to see the the, the light, as it were. Uh, this card uh, definitely can uh, be powerful. Uh, I was actually just thinking while we were talking about it. Um, th- this card, you know, you want a critical mass, you know, amount of, of instant sorceries, but uh, you know, there is a deck out there that does play a lot of them, and it is red, which is the uh, Primancer Goggle deck. Right? Yeah. So the ones that, you know, hey, play, are playing Tormenting Voice and Magmatic Insight, you know, those early, cheap, uh, you know, you know, instants or sorceries or what have you, draw you know, card draw spells along with, you know, other things that they want to duplicate. Um, you know, maybe this is something that they even want to look at, but, um, you know, this could be uh, something that, you know, red decks play in standard if, you know, once we get through red, if we think that they're viable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... If it does see standard play, I mean, you're playing things like uh, was it, uh, Fiery Temper, yeah. potentially. So, like, even, like, the trigger, like, oh, discard my hand. Oh, okay, I have this Fiery Temper. Mm-hmm. I'll get some value off of that. Yeah, you make it cheap enough, you have extra mana anyway, why not? Yeah. So, yeah, I, th- I think this card is, uh, it could be right, and people seem to be very, very receptive on it. It has a high pre-order price in Star City, so. Really? Yeah, it's like 8 bucks or something like uh, that. Is this another thing in the ice? I don't it's know. not twenty dollars yet. So like, but... thing in the ice didn't. So this card makes me think that maybe Abbott of Carol Keep might have another chance to shine in standard as well. I hope so. So I, I enjoy I myself in Abbott. I think that with um, with thing in the ice. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I like this card. Next up. All right. Next up, uh, collective defiance. So again, the cycle of collective uh, escalate cards. Uh, this is a generic red red for a sorcery. This one goes back to the white one, Escalate cost, uh, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, the uncommon one, but uh, Escalate cost of one. Choose one or more. Target player discards all of the cards in his or her hand, then draws that many cards. Collected Defiance deals four damage to target creature. Collected Defiance deals three damage to target opponent. Um, I think a lot of people are really excited about this card. I'm very medium on this card. Um, this card reminds me a lot of a card that, I remember a card that people were really excited about when it came out in standard and it was a fine card but like the rate on it was so average that it was eh uh, Dave you remember Pulse of the Forge right oh yeah that, this, this was that card immediately reminded me of where it's like people were really excited about it and it's like yeah but you just did four damage for three mana and like spent your whole turn and like this like yep. 
if Pulse you, of the Forge was a sweet card, though. It was a sweet card. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, people were like, I remember people being really, really excited about that card, and me being like, okay, it, it's good. It was a role player. It did its job well, but and I don't even know if this is going to be a good enough role player. Like, four damage to a creature and three damage to an opponent. Like, the, if those were flipped. This card maybe, would be awesome. Maybe it would. Like, you're paying f- three mana for that, or four mana for both. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Three damage to a player has consistently been a one mana effect. Yeah, I'm not talking about Lightning Bolt, I'm talking about, like, Lava Spike. You know what I mean? And, like, four damage to a creature has also been a one, one mana effect. I already said that I was down on a Collective Brutality because, like, those effects didn't feel like they were worth the mana cost. This one feels outrageous on that. The the real power in this card is going to come down to whether or not the <clears throat> the uh, I was I'm not, it's not it's not wheel it's um, windfall right the the sort of windfall esque ability if that's good enough yeah now I I know you guys are questioning sort of the the damage output but I think this card has to deal four damage to uh, a creature just because Avacyn exists in the format oh I don't I don't disagree but like it's not even a very good answer to Avacyn I mean it's, it's not great. sorcery so yeah, like, you have to like I, wait till the next turn yeah I'm I'm not saying it's great but I mean like uh, I, I mean th- this card. If uh, if a red desert dead deck exists, I think they have to play it just because it, it deals damage. A mid range deck, maybe. Like yeah, yeah. I I actually like put together a shell of like and try to like an aggressive red deck. I actually just didn't even want this card. Or like maybe you want one. Mm-hmm. You know, like as a way to. Now don't get me wrong. Like this card can do some cool things. Like uh, you know, your opponent, your control opponent, who you know is sandba- sand, uh, sandbagging finishers. Maybe maybe you're like, yeah, I'll do like three damage to you and discard your hand and draw that many cards. You know what I mean? And that can be, you know, sort of gross, especially if you're playing like Fortune's Favor. Like if they go Fortune's Favor and they're like, oh, I'll put this and this, and you're like, oh, I know it's in your hand, discard it and mm-hmm. draw some new ones. Um, and that's, that's a corner case. Um, uh, somebody pointed out uh, in modern, you can go with Spirit of the Labyrinth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In, in this, um, but I just don't. I don't know. These this these effects are going to cost so much mana. Like. Do you want to devote a whole turn? You better be doing a lot of, like, you better be killing a creature, refilling your hand uh, with better spells, and probably killing a Planeswalker to have wanted to pay five mana for this. This, this feels like a bulk rare to me. I don't know. That's just how, that's my feeling. I will rate it slightly above a bulk rare. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Mike. Slightly above okay. bulk. But I, I, I could see it um, being, being relevant at, at some point in time. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Next card, uh, Harmless Offering, uh, wins for cutest art. Oh set. my gosh, I want every copy of uh, this card. The ever. actual name of this card is Hagrid Wins a Game of Poker. <laughs> 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 like, this is literally how he gets a dragon egg. I want you to understand, the first book, this is how Hagrid gets a dragon egg. It's it's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Harmless Offering. So, this is essentially a donate uh, functional reprint, slightly different, but, you know. For all intents and purposes, it does the same thing. So, two generic and a red sorcery. Target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. So, yeah. So, you can donate your demonic pack. Yeah, de- your yeah. demonic <laughs> pack when it has just one mode left. Yeah, at the, at the current, that this is like the, the only combo um, that, that kind of exists in standard as far as like a, a combo, as it were. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, I don't know, but it's kind of cool. There might be some things maybe it's people important. try to do in modern. Yeah, the, the, yeah, this gets it gets exposed to modern. And um, if you're like me, uh, one of the only things you really want to do is kill people with demonic pact harmless offering because <laughs> you just want to play this card in standard uh, because it has a cute little cat on. How it. many foils do you want? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> I want every copy of this card. Uh, that exists. You and the rest of the internet. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean that that's definitely like where immediately everyone goes to. Again, uh, you know, Dromaka's command is such a buzzkill. Like, oh, look at this cool thing we can oh sadness, despair. I, I will say in that deck though, you're probably playing as many discard effects as you can get your hand on. Yeah, so. yeah, most most certainly. And again, you know, you could even look into like um, you know playing something like you know. Uh, Muliana's oath to kind of protect your pack, packed as long as you own it. Um, so, but yeah, discard is going to be your main, you know, protection. And then you know, there, there could be other ways where you branch into different colors as well. You maybe go Grixis or something like that. 
Um, but this card's great. Um, it, it just for existing, I don't even care how I good mean, it is. I just this art is insane. Like, the little tail face, like a little, like it's got a little tail mouth. It's like got some fangs. It's obviously bitten the guy who's got a bandage. But you can also see his like second paw is definitely just like grotesque claws. Like just like it's like no no, just take my kitty. No, like, he's fine. It's totally not a drowsy very, horror. He's very friendly. I have his papers. It's fine. He's <laughs> A-OK. His papers? He's, he's A-OK. a fine breeding animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. This is going to make a great play mat. Uh, somebody will have it at oh, some point. Whatever yeah. GP that is, if yeah. it's cross-country, we should figure out how to get there. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, Don't do that to me. <laughs> Don't do that to me, wizards. <laughs> Star City Game Circuit, pick up that art so you can just come to my, my oh neck my of the woods. All right. Uh, next up. All right, so the next up here is to, to, to make sure I had it, incendiary flow, uh, which is volcanic hammer. Moving on, <laughs> it's volcanic hammer uh, that exiles a creature. So. Uh, it's it's generic and a red for a sorcery incendiary flow deals three damage to a creature or player. If a creature would uh, dealt damage this way, it would die this turn. Exile it instead. So here's our almost lightning strike, but apparently we can't have an instant speed lightning strike because whoa, like. I saw, like, there was a great post. Someone said, like, all the effects that we get, like, Jeroka's Command, fine. Avacyn, sure. Secure the Waste, whatever. Uh, <laughs> incinerate. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on, guys. <clears throat> uh, yeah, just a little odd. Um, this, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a card we wanted in the format. We got it back in the format. A three damage burn spell that can go to player or face. The exile clause. Creature is, or face. Uh, I'm sorry, player or face. I said both. Yeah. Player or creature's face. Um <laughs> And it, the exile clause is, is is definitely not irrelevant. You know, uh, we talked about how there's a lot of graveyard interactions, and we, we might see some recursion. Uh, you have things like delirium to think about. You still have hangerback walker in the format. Um, so you know, exile is is important. Um, this can kill an opponent's creature while there's an avacyn to play, and not flip the avacyn. Uh, so you know, th- this I think is a very important card. But I think it's frustrating that like you're, there's some good red burn in the format now. You can play this, and you can play Exquisite Firecraft, and you can play them all on your turn, and that's frustrating. I I don't disagree with you. Um, I, I think this card will uh, certainly see play, and um, you know, definitely gives red a bit of a boost. Um, and I I want it to be enough. Like ah, it's just so bad, just so bad that I want this to be like ah, this is what this is what we needed, but it. it it almost feels like it may not be enough, and um, which is kind of sad, uh, you know, kind of uh, unsatisfactory in my opinion. It's not, it's not fair for a red to be like so bad and just so under, underrepresented. Maybe, maybe it's just that you know all the other colors are well, at least three of them are, are so good right now. It, it, yeah, this this feels so poorly balanced. All of a sudden, it's just strange. And I know that they, you know, Zendikar was a weird block. And by essentially making colorless a sixth color for a block, they really had to do some strange balancing things. But it does just feel like certain colors just got like fully let, just left off the map. And it's going to take a little bit of time for that to recover. Now, green will lose a lot of its super strength that it has right now when uh, Dragons finally does rotate. Um, but man, let's just get Tarkir out of everywhere. Like first it was Siege Rhino and then now it's Collective Company. Just Tark here, get away. Just don't. We, no one loves you anymore. <laughs> Nobody, not even Ugin. And that's that's saying something. It's true. I, uh, I'm going to give this card some love. I, I yeah. don't. I, no, no, no. I, we I mean, like the card. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're upset that this is the card we get. But the, yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't. I don't want. I don't want Cedary Flow to feel like. We we don't love it as much. I mean, this is the this is the sweetest flavor text I may have ever seen. Yeah. Uh, what's your plan? Getting asked. Are you serious? Shocker replied. <laughs> Her plan is to burn things. <laughs> burn them good. Yeah. No, but I, I like this card. I, I think when when this was was spoiled, I like I told you guys I was like I've never been so excited for sorcery speed three damage. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. The card is definitely fine in the form, like, good in the format. It'd be better yeah. than good in the format. But it just it's frustrating. Yeah, I I think in the end, red red's not going to have enough to to see a, a good mono red aggro deck. So you're saying in the end. It, doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. matter. And it didn't even matter. <laughs> um, but th- this is the the kind of card that Red's been needing. Yeah, even if it's sorcery agree. speed, it's still you know an efficient burn spell that can go to the dome. So cool. All right. Moving on, uh, Mirror Wing Dragon. So who knew we had dragons on Innistrad? 
Uh, we, Everybody we, did. We had dragons on Innistrad. That didn't was we? a ba- Balefire dragon. Was a was actually yeah. a fairly expensive mythic for, for commander. There was a moon dragon something or other. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm. Yeah, there were dragons for original. This yeah. is the first like new Innistrad yes. dragon that we've had. Okay. All right. So mirror wing dragon is a three generic red red four five flying. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a mirror wing dragon, that player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. Um, so this is kind of a way to uh, discourage your opponents from targeting <laughs> this with removal because then they'll end up targeting all their own creatures with the same removal spell. Uh, and then uh, on the flip side of that, you can actually... Uh, target this with something like a pump spell and pump up your whole team, which is pretty sweet. But your opponent can target it with a pump spell and pump their whole team. This card that's is true. weird. It is weird. Yeah. Um, so uh, that 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 certainly is the 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 downside. The good news is pump spells aren't necessarily that popular. Not not at the moment. No, they're not. So uh, that that's kind of the upside. Removal spells always popular in every format. So there, there you go. You're 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 you know playing on the the right side of the the coin flip at that point in time. Um, I guess it's also important that this technically is another playable dragon, and we still have yeah. uh, uh, Draconic Roar in the format. Yeah, I, I I think the reason I included this card that the ability on it is interesting, um, but the four five flyer for five that's a dragon I think is in red is very very relevant still. Um, it's it's not easy to kill. Um, it doesn't die to like, you know, like your opponent can't kill it with just a grasp of darkness. And then they also have to make sure that they just don't like kill the rest of their team. Um, so it, it's in a good place as a flyer in the format. It's also going to beat an Avacyn, uh, a, a non-flipped Avacyn heads up. Uh, I, so it won't die to that in combat. I just thought of like, so you go Thunderbreak region into this guy and like your opponent just has like removal spells are like, why? <laughs> I don't want to copy this at all. <laughs> I have to. I have to take their damage and kill all my creatures to <laughs> kill your mirror wing. No. Yeah. It, uh, it's, so I think this card is interesting. I don't. Will it see play? I have no idea. But it's it's sort of a unique. Well, it's very unique outside of like heat Zadra heat yeah. grinder, which has the same ability on your side. So you can just play that deck if you want. <laughs> you can figure that that trigger <laughs> mess around. So I, I just thought of something with this, right? So if your opponent. Declaration and stones this. Does that just kill it? Because declaration and stone can only target your opponent's creatures. Yeah, yeah, that's awkward. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously. <laughs> well, well, I'm for- sorry to rain on your parade, guys. But- <laughs> it is uh, unfortunate, uh, of course. Um, so I, I told I told Morgan I think the most awesome thing you can do, and I hope this happens limited, is that you have this and a bunch of other creatures, right? And then you attack, and then you play the green pump spell that gives target cre- so you investigate, and then. Creature gets plus one plus one for each clue you control, and then you just watch it as it goes, do 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 do, and you end up with six clues, and then <laughs> your last guy got plus six plus six, and they're all, I, I just really want that to happen. Yeah, that sounds great. All that sounds perfect. I want, I want to do it in standard too. Yeah, so it, it is a mythic. Um, obviously that it's, a, you know, a mythic for a reason that's a very powerful effect, again, to have unlimited, uh, potentially, unless your opponent, you know, has declaration in stone and then you're just like, well, all right. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, th- I think this card is something, uh, that maybe people are kind of under- understating and, um, I, I could see a breakthrough. So next up. Our silence, utter silence is great too. <laughs> uh, that was me. Yeah. Did I mess up? I'm sorry. I didn't mess up this time. Morgan, I'm sorry I did it. That's the Hero's Wrath. Uh, I was just so not excited about this card that I didn't want to say it. Yeah, this card yeah, can, is... Can just give over this No, one? because I think... I, I, I want to mention this because I think a lot of people were really excited about this and have not understood how it works. Um, the Hero's Wrath is too generic and a red for a sorcery. As an additional... Mythic, by the way. I want you to understand. As an additional cost to cast Nahiri's Wrath, discard X cards. Nahiri's Wrath deals damage equal to the total converted mana cost of the discarded cards to each of up to X target creatures and their planeswalkers. I know when you read this card, you want to think that you... So you discard your, your Ulamog, and then you deal 10 damage to each creature and planeswalker your opponent controls. No. If you discard an Ulamog, you can deal 10 damage to a creature or planeswalker they control. If you discarded two Ulamogs, then you could do 20 damage to two creatures or planeswalkers. Do you understand? So this card 
is awful. <laughs> like, literally miserable. Yeah, I don't get it. Okay? You have to go so deep into card disadvantage to wipe a board, it's not even close to possible. And discarding lands are worthless, so don't but, think that you're going to be able to pitch but, extra land cards to do anything besides get more targets. But but what if you, like, discard two Ulamogs and target your own Boros Reckoner? You did it. <laughs> Congratulations. You won. Boom. Man. Dead. Uh, I, I just this card seems like again th- this is this is the kind of card they're designing for madness where it's like discard madness cards will that be cool and it's like one you didn't make most of your madness cards actually cost less than their initial mana cost so that's not happening two I, you have to pay so much mana in the first place like so to, like to double fiery temper or something you have to pay five mana what red deck is doing that yeah this 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 card. I definitely, like, read it the first time I read it. I, I read it like how you said, where it's like, oh, man, I just get to do, like, 10 to everything? That's awesome. Like, no. Yeah, I, it's not even, like, that good either. No, it's, like, it's, it's not. Still, it's like, still two for one. still, like, yeah. Two, oh, you know, depending on what the board looks like. <laughs> I, I just, there's, again, there are decks that maybe they could use this. You know what I mean? Like, a Grishel brand or something wants to put something specific in the graveyard. But, man, this is a lot of mana for a really average effect. And it can't even hit a player. So you like like and I understand like yes because then you could just discard your hand and possibly kill your opponent. Do something different then because this card's terrible. Yeah. Now, do you think this is possibly playable in uh, Modern Dredge? It's possible. You could do that, it, right? It costs Cause... three every time though. Modern Dredge like doesn't always want to get to land yeah. drop three. Yeah, but like you could, you know, discard your hand. Like it kind of just wants to discard its hand anyway, right? Uh, you can, like wipe their board out. There that, is that, there that, is, that that might be a legitimate. There is a scenario where this card will see play. Right. But. The way the Wizards, you know, the the Wansi is designing this card to interact with our current, like, the format and the set they've created, calling this a Mythic Rare and wanting yeah. someone to be excited about it doesn't make any sense. So this is good and limited? Maybe. It, you still have to have, you know, five or six mana. Like, is it, in limited, you can use it to, what, always two for one or three for two yourself, but if you're killing good enough things, maybe that's worth it. But again, you, you can't use lands, so you have to discard relevant spells. So they they better be like they better be madness spells. I don't know. Like there's nothing good about this. Like like I have to discard actual things I'd like to cast to kill the things you already got to cast. Good thing I only paid three mana to do it. Uh, cool. I'm uh, making myself angry. I'm making what? myself uh, actually angry. I am about, feeling Nihiri's wrath. <laughs> just think about how good it is in modern dredge. Let's move on. All right. Great. A deck that I couldn't care any less about. So <laughs> everyone should be upset about this card because why Why are you putting a skill tester uh, in, in Mythic Rare? God, I'm so angry. I wish I got to read the next one. <laughs> do you want to do the next one? Yes. I'll give this one to you. Thank you. All right. Savage Alliance. Savage. Savage. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, crazy. Dave and I both had um, flat brimmed hats appear on backwards on our heads. Like, just poof. <laughs> just got there. Uh, so, because we formed a... Savage Alliance. Uh, two generic and a red for an instant with Escalate. Um, choose one or more. Creatures target player controls gain trample until end of turn. Savage Alliance deals two damage to target creature. Savage Alliance deals one damage to each creature target opponent controls. This one, I think, is real spicy. Okay? As far as the, like, the red Escalate spell that I want to play, this is the one I want to play. Now, it's still a little bit mana intensive, but at four mana, you can give your whole team trample... And then Simoon is the effect I mentioned earlier. You could deal one damage to all creatures your opponent controls. Not only will that possibly kill some of them, but for a lot of people who get confused on how Trample works, you only have to assign lethal damage with Trample. So this is effectively a minus one, you know, a minus X minus one for their team. So this can surprise kill out of nowhere. And like the other mode where it's two damage to a creature, if you get to you know, play this for the whole the whole uh, five, uh, then that's also another two. So you this blows out blocks so hard i'm excited about this card uh, you definitely have to find the deck for it um which is like my my argument there isn't a whole lot of uh i, I don't know what it is either but that deck plays this and a Tarkus command <laughs> yeah. and it's probably pretty good i want i want that deck too the deck that deck probably, sounds great probably really benefits from a plus one of a flipped arlen cord too where is this deck i want it <laughs> so bad <sighs> It doesn't exist. And we need more, like... You know what, the deck... I, no, I just don't know. I just don't know. Like, I just don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I did. I wish maybe, it existed. Maybe it's... We saw red-green tokens be kind of a thing. Maybe it's a red-green tokens, or, or even a red-green humans. We'll, uh, we'll get to green here We got, in a minute. You know, maybe this is the deck that wants to play some of the werewolves that are okay. None of these terrible new ones. And then, like... But maybe it's a deck that's also playing, like, 
um, Honor Garrison, which we'll talk about in a second, and like Hamlet Captains, and that in the same deck, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it'd be worth looking at though, because I think this spell, this spell, and Atarkas Command still being in the format, is is dangerous. They're both very good. All right, all right. Let's move on. All right. So our last non-transform red card is a uh, Stromkirk Occultist, uh, two generic and a red for a three-two vampire horror. Has trample. Uh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Whenever Stromkirk Occultist deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Uh, also has madness for a generic and a red. So, kind of a lot going on with this card here. Um, it's kind of a pseudo Abbot of Carol Keep, but repeatable uh, if you can clear the way for it or you know trample over one one or something. Uh, Feels like the madness is kind of just tacked on there, but I feel like it's like that for like a lot all of cards. The cards yeah, yeah. Um, madness like like in red is just kind of frustrating because I feel like there just aren't enough outlets. Like if this was black, like it would just be so much better. But uh, I I don't know about this one. I think uh, I I tend to think if vampires is going to be a thing, it's going to be mono black or or very light splash for like Olivia. I, I agree, but we have seen how powerful that trigger is, having seen it a couple times now. Now, granted, you know, it's been better when it's not been associated with combat damage. You know, see Abacaro Keep versus Prophetic Flame Speaker. Um, but the fact that you can sneak this card in at the end of a turn, you know, if you have the right Madness Outlet, I think that's where the key to, if this card's good, it may not be, but if this card is, is good, it, the key is on a clear board going, uh, end of turn, I have this guy that's going to get me card advantage. Um, and we'll see from there. 3-2, like, hilariously with Trample, is also one of the better bodies of the uh, vampires in general. Because most of them are X1s or 2-1s or 2-2s. Two so 3-2 yeah. with Trample is hilariously one of the better bodies. Yeah, this can trade with a Sylvan Abdicate. Oh, whoa! For no value. Wacky! <laughs> so is this better or worse than, um, was it Prophetic? Flames, what was that guy? Yeah, I think it's worse than Prophetic Flame Speaker, but that's because Double Strike yeah. is inherently very powerful. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Red, Red Ophidian. <laughs> Red, yeah. Nah. Uh, can, can we mention quickly, just as we pass, uh, Weaver of Lightning? Because it's just so weird to see a 1 4 reach creature in red. <laughs> in red, yeah. This is literally the best spider in the format. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, I mean, that's not even true. We, we know that's not true. Okay, the best spider you could expect to open. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, so but go ahead. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to uh, the Hanwer Garrison before we move out of red here. All right, that is the last one. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit. Hanwer Garrison is one of the meld cards that works with the. Um, oh, let me make sure I get down to it because meld is all the way at the literal bottom, underneath everything else. Not even with the transform cards. I hate everything. Uh, so <laughs> Hanwer Garrison works with Hanwer Battlements. Uh, this is a two generic and a red for a two three human soldier. Uh, whenever Hanwer Garrison attacks, put two one one red human creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Uh, so I will say I, I wasn't very high in this card, but if the deck that I'm envisioning that plays a Tarkus Command and this other card, this is the card that deck wants, Ooh. and it wants it so bad. <laughs> so yeah. um, that makes me a little bit excited. And uh, I, I mentioned again, we're gonna get to uh, Hamlet Captain, which is a reprint in green. We're gonna talk about that card with this card is really gross. Um, yeah, this because those are humans. Uh, that's and that's important. So yeah, th- this card has a lot going for it. It, uh, it, 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 it. I have grown on it. When I first it, thought it was like, eh, but maybe the cards are here to make this card something special. I agree. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people compare this to Goblin Rabble Master. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I think Rebel Master was another card that was kind of undervalued when it first came out and it people didn't really was. think a lot of it um th- this card on its own even without you know the meld uh being able to meld i i think is, is very interesting like you said you know th- anything like a Tarkus command uh nissa voice of zendikar like works really well with this you know um just any any kind of uh you know anthem effect will, will make this card you know even even better so um yeah, I, I mean, I, I like this, um, and obviously, you know, being able to meld it 
Did you guys want to just talk about the the meld now while we're on it? Uh, well, you know, Hondo Battlements is the land we talked about that gives a it adds a actual colorless to the mana pool, or for red, it can give target creature haste until the turn. Or if you pay three generic red red and you own and control both Battlements and Garrison, you can meld it into the um, the, the, the writhing township. Yeah, Hondo the writhing township was this giant seven four trample haste, and that's attack trigger uh, puts two three two Eldrazi. Um, uh, horror tokens out of the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So it becomes a really, really big version of the garrison. This one I'm less high on possibly happening. Uh, granted, you can just play the lands and it can kind of happen, but uh, a lot can happen to your 2-3 garrison when your opponent knows that you're trying to make a 7-4 out of it. Yeah. And even then, a 7-4 is really killable in this format, Grasp of Darkness being a premium removal spell. Uh, so I, I'm sure it will happen, and someone will take 14 off this and just... Like, or 13, right? 7, yeah, so 13 off of it. Um, but I, I I think the I think that both of these cards are going to be playable enough on their own, much like the white ones are, that I think it, it may happen because you have both cards there, but you didn't build your deck to make it happen. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, both of these cards are just good on their own. And this one is interesting because you can control the meld, uh, whereas the, the Bruna and the Gisela, you can't control it. If you just have them in play then at the end of turn, it will melt. Like, you don't have a choice. This one, you can kind of just like, all right, well, we'll just hold it up. And, I mean, maybe you're not going to hold it up, but like y- you just have that option where, like, okay, maybe you don't want to do it this turn, but... You know. Yeah, at your end stuff, you can stop the world. And... <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, I can see the difference now. Together. <laughs> it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better all the time. All the time. All right, so uh, overall impressions of uh, of Red. Maybe there's an aggressive red deck back. Maybe we've got some burn back. Maybe, maybe there's a little spark left in red, yeah. but we'll see. And maybe we'll have to hold our breath until Kaladesh. <laughs> um, uh, if you hold the breath, then you can't fan the flames. Uh, well, I mean, it seems like I, I feel like they are, are just trying to emphasize other colors. Uh, I mean, red um, you know, really had its heyday with the target red. Uh, and that that deck was so uh, persistent for so long, and I really feel like they didn't want to, you know, keep highlighting red, so they kind of just shifted their focus, and that's what we're seeing right now. So it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah, I I think if we do see a red deck, it's going to be somewhat of a, a go wide strategy. I think you're going to see things like Hanware Garrison with P and Kieran Alar, maybe you know, in combination with Tarkas Command and things like that. I think. That's the way that red's going to have to go. I don't think it's just a straight, aggressive, you know, one-drop aggro deck is going to be viable. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. For sure. All right. Green. Uh, so let's uh, start off. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at green here. We have... Uh, let's go right to the card that everyone's been talking about. Uh, probably the most hyped card in the set. Oh, by, by yeah. far margin, for uh, sure. Eldritch Evolution. Um, this is when you go outside and you catch enough wheels on Pokemon Go to mm-hmm. get a Kakuna and a Beedrill. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a uh, generic green green for a sorcery. Uh, as an additional cost to, uh, to cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrifice a creature, uh, it, which if you're familiar with powerful green sorceries, this is a clause that you're going to like. <laughs> uh, search a library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, where X is 2 plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library, exile Eldritch Evolution. So uh, we sort of mentioned this card a little bit before. This is sort of somewhere between a, um, you know, a Court of Calling and a uh, you know, Birthing Pod uh, as a single use. But it's pretty powerful. You know, Obviously, the, the, the huge illusion here is being made to Natural Order. Uh, a Natural Order, while it could get any creature by sacking a creature... Uh, they all had to be, well, it had, it's not any creature, let me rephrase, you, where you could say the mana cost didn't matter, the color did, it, it was very green-centric, uh, thus why Progenitus or, um, um, shoot. Creative, creative Behemoth. Behemoth. Thank you, Creative Behemoth were the, the win conditions off that, which we, we will talk about another Creative Behemoth here in a little <laughs> bit. Uh, this one's interesting, though, because it's, you know, you get X plus two in the mana cost, and it only costs three to do this, so this makes you want to start looking for the most broken things you can do mana cost-wise. Now, in Modern, this is going to be much more uh, powerful than what we have in Standard so far, but in Modern, we've already seen people looking at things like Allosaurus Rider. Became why, why, people? Why did you buy an Allosaurus Rider? <laughs> because it, I, it's almost a $10 card now. Allosaurus Rider is a s- seven mana 
star one, star one, and it had power, toughness equal to number of lands you controlled, plus one, right? Uh, but you could, the key was it's from Cold Snap, and you could exile two green cards in your hand instead of paying its mana cost. The idea is that you could go turn one mana guy, turn two Allosaurus Rider, Eldritch Revolution into Iona, Grizzlebrand, Elish Norn, and you could do this for a low, low cost of your whole hand. <laughs> your whole hand? Um, well, I have two of those. Like, well, you can only do it twice in a tournament then. <laughs> um, the other option that people have really been looking at, and the one that probably has more, um, I don't know, playability. Feasibility, to, yeah. Uh, is Mirror Enforcer. Correct. Uh, so you go with a sort of an affinity build, and you, if Mirror Enforcer, if you don't know, is a seven uh, cost artifact creature that's a 4 4 that has affinity for artifacts. So you play your artifacts, you play your, you know, your Mirror Enforcer for super cheap, and then Mirror Enforcer becomes your big fatties. So this card's begging to be broken in modern. I don't feel like it has legacy applications because that format already has every cheat effect you could already want uh, that are better. But in modern, it has a home. In standard, people are still excited about it, but I don't know how you break it just yet. Yeah, it, it's definitely, uh, I think, an older format card. Um, another thing you can do is, is use Delve Creatures. Oh, uh, correct. Yeah, Tassiger. So you can, yeah, you can play a Tassiger, and, and then, yeah, you can play a Tassiger, you know, for one mana. Cast this, go get a crystal brand. You can go from six to eight. Pretty so. good. Yeah, pretty I mean, good. Not bad. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this one's kind of scary. I mean, this one, this one, I think is definitely going to impact modern uh, for sure. We'll see about legacy. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, in standard, people have talked about how you can go from you know your three drops into an Avison. Uh, uh, and you can also like this. This might be a way that you could, if you really wanted to work on melding like your Gisela and your Bruna together, then like you could sack like your Thalios <laughs> Lancers to this. But I just don't see it being as impactful and standard. You, you you're not trading up into something so great that it's always going to be worth two for winning yourself because you can't just you know in that with in Legacy with Natural Order you can throw away a Dryad Arbor. You know what I mean to go get Progenitus. Uh, you can't just like sack your soldier token to get something super relevant in standard. So the cost is real. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what it does. Definitely, I agree. Definitely a scary card. If if it, it'll, I think it'll take. I hope it takes people a little bit of time to figure out how to break it. But when they do, man, this card goes on high alert real quick. Yeah. Um. I mean, for standard battery shaper, it's still a thing you can do. So you can do <laughs> battery shaper to reality smasher. And, you just, uh, and then you're not down a card. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. So, uh, so that's pretty good. And I think that's where, if you want to start with this card, that's like your, like, this is, this, that's like point A, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think we'll talk about some other cards that Matter Reshaper works with when we get deeper into this. <laughs> uh, yeah. When, when they emerge from our spoiler. Yeah, that makes uh, a lot of sense. All right. Uh, next up. All right. So you have, uh, Next card, Emrakul's Evangel. Uh, two generic and a green. Human horror. <laughs> so some guys got some. He's like some totally like swirly a dude, by the way. Like, that's exactly what he's doing. He's just <laughs> uh, like, it's just with his thumb. Like, I, well, I guess his tendrily thumb. I firmly believe that's the chalice of life and death. <laughs> well, it's very representing <laughs> the death side at this point. Uh, yeah, he chose poorly. Um, <laughs> this guy's a 3-2. Uh, he has tap, sacrifice, Emrakul's Evangel, and any number of other non-Eldrazi creatures you might have laying around. Uh, put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token onto the battlefield for each creature sacrificed this way. Uh, so if I'm reading that right, you can just sacrifice himself to get a 3-2? Yes. Okay. Oh. Um I don't really know what this would be used for, to be honest. With you. So, what I see people doing with it so far and, and trying to slot it into are the black green sacrifice decks. Yeah, this is like um, another one of those effects. You can't sack the scions, yeah. but you can't, or, or the um, uh, the two three. I, I can't. I'm not remembering names. I'm sorry. We're real deep into this Palooza at this point. Uh, you, the catacomb sifter. Thank yeah. you. But everything else can, uh, and this is important because one, the three twos are generally have more power than half the things you're sacrificing. Like, if you're sacrificing a bunch of loam dryads to this, right, then you're increasing in power. But it also really warps the math on boards if you're trying to kill with a cutthroat because you can, like, double up half your creatures. Uh, like, oh, look, I sacked all these, and I got these three two Eldrazi horrors. Oh, and I'm going to sack all these Eldrazi horrors. So that's where I've seen this going into. You know, um, 
the fact that you have to tap it to activate the ability means it is definitely vulnerable for a little bit. Uh, but it is still a three drop that gets hit off a company. Yeah. So I think that is yeah. I know everything gets hit off a company. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So I think that's where you might see this card. Um, it's also you know once it's untapped, it's it's another card that's language protection that doesn't have any mana investment in it. If it, you know if it's already untapped, so uh, sort of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's real gross. I just like, imagine like board states with this guy, and then like husk, and like you're just like no, <laughs> like yeah, and people people doing math wrong, like just people just not being able to do the math on the board because of this card. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, the, the, this might cause because I know the the you know green black X sacrifice X have really lost you know their steam, so this could be something that kind of charges that back up. So we'll see for sure. Uh, I think it's also important to note that the way his trigger works, uh, it's you sacrifice them and any other number so it doesn't get like shut down by like Kalidus. Like the clause doesn't, you know, you don't just not get three twos because of it where a lot of other effects like this, it's shut off because of it. So, uh, all right. The next card is Gnarlwood Dryad. This is a green for a one wood Dryad horror, uh, which, you know, you, when you look at it, it may not look like a horror. You're like, yeah, it's just got a bunch of branches of the Dryad. Those are arm branches. This is creepy. That's what you understand. <laughs> uh, anyways, it has death touch. Uh, and as Delirium, Narwhal Dryad gets plus two, plus two, as long as you have Delirium. Uh, we talked about this card a little bit, how this is sort of, this set's answer to um, uh, Threshold, and their, their one drop, you know, uh, it's probably not as good as Nimble Mongoose, obviously, but Death Touch is pretty relevant. And mm-hmm. if you are able to combine this with, like, Grim Flare, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you know, that, it, you know, in, like, Mourn Willow, that deck can get kind of aggressive pretty quickly if you can hit Delirium consistently. And, it, you know, a 1-1 one, one Death Touch is annoying. A 3-3 three, three Death Touch means there's a ton of creatures that have to get out of the way. Um, and you're going to, you know, you're going to be, you know, in this format, especially looking at the Bank Company decks, all the 2-3s, they're going to be throwing two creatures into this, you know, to block it, and you're fine with your 1-drop trading with two of their guys. Oh, yeah. So, uh... I think this card has a chance to do, you know, that deck has to prove itself. But, you know, if, the, if there's a Delirium deck that's sort of aggressive and tops out at, like, you know, Mind Wreck Demon, I think this card has a chance to, to do some work. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of this card. Uh, even just the base, you know, 1-1 one, one Death Touch is, is fine. Uh, but, yeah, becoming a 3-3 three, three is pretty big for one mana. I actually think this could see some modern play. So, Mike, after playing Death Shadow Zoo, what do you think, like, how often do you think you got Delarian with that deck? You know, pretty consistently. Like, you get artifacts, sorcery, land. Like, land, land and, and, yeah. I mean, it, it's actually, like, kind of an equal distribution of almost everything. So. Yeah, and, and, like, cycling creatures. Like, I, I don't know if it's better than the creature. Honestly, it wouldn't have to take much for me to be sold on this over stupid step Step, step links. Like, <laughs> That's what I was about uh, to it say. It would make the mana a lot better, actually. <laughs> yeah, so. I was like, yeah, uh, Mike, you definitely want to play this over step links, even if it's not right. But, I mean, like, so this is kind of insane with with trample though so that's like the best thing right like ah I was... yeah, oh like... oh yeah no yeah team are battle raging this like with any pump spell like even if they put like a bunch of blockers in front of it you're like cool deal one to this and deal one to that and you're, you're dead <laughs> you're dead you're all still right dead. i'm actually sold i'm really excited about this now there you go we did it yeah i I, yeah. I might have already made the decision over the weekend to finish picking up the stuff for that deck i really just need some death shadows and like two verta catacombs so um and get a goif eventually, whatever. Yeah, yeah that's time. exactly what I did. Man. I was like, man, I have like all these cards except for Death Shadows. Yeah, those are only like seven dollars. Whatever, I can get those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, though, so funny story I saw on Twitter this weekend. Apparently, so uh, Death Shadows are still very affordable in Paper Magic. Uh, they're still under ten, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but on Moto, they are more expensive than Jason the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> <laughs> really? Weird. That is a real thing. <laughs> the, the economies are weird. Yeah, they are. All right, next card. Uh, to read or not to read this card? Do it. That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn now, right? Yeah. All right. I was asking you. <laughs> uh, okay, I thought you were saying, should you read it? No. Okay. Hamlet Captain. <laughs> uh, so this is a reprint from original Anastrad. Uh It's a generic and a green for a human warrior. It's a tutu. Whenever Hamlet Captain attacks or blocks, other humans you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty sweet reprint. Um, it feels like we have more humans in this block than we did in the original Anastrod. Maybe. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially in this set, you kind of see a shift. There are a lot of green humans. 
um, where it almost felt like it was like so white blue before. It's been heavily implied, and we'll see like when we get to like permeating mass, even in green, that like the forests are the only place that Emrakul's had a hard time <laughs> breaking through. Breaking through. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Yeah. In the forest. So that makes sense that most of our traditional humans would then be green. Because they have they've gone into the forest like and been like, all right, we're just gonna hang out here. We're not going crazy. Nah, 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 not nah. Emrakul. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think I don't think we to say too much about this card. Um, you know, its attack trigger. You know, we saw this. You know, when it first was played, uh, is really powerful if you have a deck full of humans. Uh, and the fact that we you know, we said we have some strategies that might want to go wide. This sort of effect is pretty powerful, and it makes your opponent like want to be priced into blocking this 2-2 instead of the rest of your pumped-up team. And then if you have any tricks, things get real bad. So, uh, I like this card. Solid solid role player. This card was great and limited. Oh, yeah. Uh, the original time. So, I mean, I imagine it'd be pretty pretty disgusting uh, yeah. this time around as well. I mean, we already had green-white as a, a pretty effective, uh, you know, aggressive archetype. I imagine that will, you know, continue to be the case with uh, this card, you know, showing up. So, Oh, man, I could do this. Uh, the sound okay. So the name of this card sounds like Harry Potter's speaking part or uh, parcel tongue, but uh, uh, Ishkana, right? Is it not? It so it reminds me of like uh, the mummy a lot too. Oh yeah, that's good too. <laughs> uh, Ishkana Graph Widow. This is a uh, four generic and a green for a legendary creature spider. There you go, spider uh, tribal. <laughs> so notice it costs CMC of five to get a big spider that has a delirium trigger. It's a three five with reach. Delirium trigger, uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, if you have four or more cards, you have Delirium. Uh, put three one two green spider creature tokens with reach onto the battlefield. Oh. So if you have Delirium, you've just cast Spider Spawning for four. Uh, and then it has an activated ability of the six generic and a black. Target opponent loses one life for each spider you control. So if you remember Spider Spawning, it costs you know, green and four, and then it flashed back for a black and six. So the Ishkana is... Spider spawning. She literally spawns the spiders and damages you with the spiders. Um, I I think this card's awesome. Yeah, this card's sweet. Like <laughs> the only thing that that I don't like about it is we've kind of seen like some some of the delirium cards that we've talked about have been like kind of aggressive. Like you said, and this one's kind of like you want to play it in what I would consider like a more traditional delirium deck, kind of like a mid rangey black yeah. green deck, right? But I think this card is like super powerful. I mean, I mean, it's comparable to um, what's the what's the card I'm thinking of? The white card that put three one ones into play. Uh, Cloud Gun Ranger. Yeah, I think it's comparable to that. I mean, if you hit Delirium, obviously. Um, yeah, but yeah I, I can guarantee you if you're playing like a mid range matchup you you don't want to see this on the other side of the oh board. no and that, that triggers <laughs> that triggers painful too like they, mm-hmm. that ability goes to do something with all your mana um, yeah i th- I think this card's definitely playable i i, I honestly I, it made me think of uh of a defensive hornet queen you know what I mean right, obviously yeah. you don't have death touch but you get a lot of bodies for only five mana like if you if you can consistently trigger this at five mana and you just swarm the board and um uh, you know the crazy thing about spider spawning is you're like okay yeah there are a bunch of one two spiders. They block really efficiently because team blocking with those spiders, a lot of creatures can't kill more than one of the spiders by dealing damage. So, like, it, it works out really well for the spiders. Let me just tell you that. Yeah. They, uh, they're good at uh, taking things down, gumming up the works, messing with the web. <laughs> Spinning. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I like this card especially. Um, you know, we I think, you know, green, black, uh, delirium, you know, we keep kind of circling back to this, you know, uh, archetype, but... Uh, they really pumped uh, a lot of stuff into it from Eldritch Moon. I think they really want it to be a thing, so hopefully it will. I know I'm excited to build it. All right. Uh, next card we have is Noose Constrictor, um, a.k.a. Wild Mongrel. <laughs> Somewhat better, actually, yeah, in some I, ways. Yeah, I think, I think Reach is pretty good. Yeah, so Noose Constrictor uh, is a generic and a green for a 2-2 snake with reach. And it has discard a card. Noose Constrictor gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, uh, obviously, it's a throwback to Wild Mongol, which is basically the same thing, but minus reach. And it also gained the ability of changing colors, which is kind of a weird thing it, to do. I mean, it allowed it to dodge some interesting removal spells. Yeah. So, it's not, not so much relevant these days, as we don't have things like Doomblade and stuff like that. Um, but 
in any case. Rest in peace, Doom Blade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, yeah, this one does die to Doom Blade, though. So, yeah, that's right. Wild Marco doesn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, kind of some. Kind of a surprising uh, pseudo reprint because Wild Mongrel was like one of the best cards in that limited format back in Odyssey. That was obviously a long time ago, um, but it was also a format that you know had madness in it. Um, don't see so much madness in, in green. In fact, you see zero, but, but, but in black. <laughs> I mean, you know, but in black, the, yeah. You know, this this makes for like I think in draft this is an easy first pick. Oh yeah, and you know you can yeah. you can build the delirium deck with a touch of madness and be very excited every time you cast this on two. Uh, you can attack with this card. You know, just like Wild Bonker, if you if you are playing with a certain mindset, you can sort of attack with this card with impunity for a long time, uh, and. I don't. I don't know if it'll be as good in standard. That deck card was great in standard because you had cheap and/or free madness spells. Yeah. Um, but if the delirium deck's good enough, and you know you have the deck that's already playing our your death touchy tree friend, uh, <laughs> then you know this card might be the natural two drop that sort of enable you know to go along with Grim Flare that sort of enables that archetype. You know, just you know discarding that key card. You know, it's going to be a land pretty often, I think. Uh, that's sort of like one that was harder to get into the graveyard, and then. You know, that one discard can make an entire combat step disgusting all of a sudden. So it might it, it might be good enough. Yeah. I think in this set, for the most part, I mean, a lot of the discard outlets allow you to discard more than one. I think we have the one vampire guy that only lets you do one per turn. But other than that, there are a lot of cards in the set that just let you discard cards, like, as many as you want. Basically. Right. Which, that, as long as they're not just, like, black cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so it's kind of it's kind of different than what we saw from uh, from shadows, which a lot of the cards are kind of capped. It's like you could do this once per turn. Yeah. So, so. nice. Um, let's uh, let's talk about permeating mass. Then I know Morgan. I really like this card. <laughs> this is a green for a one three creature spirit. Um, whenever permeating mass deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of permeating mass. Uh, so this is an interesting card. Now I mentioned I mentioned before how like people are going green. This flavor text here says Woodland Geist concluded that Emrakul would be unable to warp the denizens of the forest if the Geist got there first. So actively, all the Geists in the forest are just like oh, one of us. If we if we band together as us, as we we are the us. We cannot become Emrakul because we are us. Does that make sense? <laughs> I am the one who is called I am. <laughs> this is pretty. <laughs> um, this is a weird card. It is super weird. Um... It, like, so you block, like, with this card, and then they get one, so now you're, it's hard for you to attack, but, like, what, I, I don't know, man. So, I think Morgan and I both uh, quickly identified that this is a pretty sweet one-drop if you're playing red-green ramp. Yeah, it, it could be. I, I mean, yeah, I definitely, um, but basically what you're saying is, like, uh, yeah, you could have permeating mass, uh, permeating mass, uh, I'm going to cast this Coslex Return. I'm going to cast my Ulamog. You don't have any more creatures because I flash back my Coslex Return. And I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> yeah, because uh, currently they're playing the... It's like the ninth time. Jotty option. Thank you. The, ga- the, the life gain uh, landfall trigger, which is fine. It's 0-3. It blocks a lot of things. But it doesn't stop your opponent from attacking. Uh, you know, Especially if they have multiple like Sylvan Advocates, uh, which your Coslex Return doesn't kill. This card stops that. Uh, you don't want to just run your Sylvan Advocates into permeating mass because then they become permeating masses. Uh, and you know what they say about permeating masses? If you make a permeating mass out of my creature... Uh, <laughs> okay, I think that joke works. I, I don't know if I told it perfectly, but that joke works on a fundamental level. So, uh, And if not, it'll just become a permeating mass. Um, yeah, I don't know what happens when a board state of your opponent and you each have like three or four of these and no one can get anywhere, but... It's sweet. I, I just chuckled to, my, to myself just thinking about, like, a board state where, like, if you're playing this in a ramp deck and, like, you attack with an Ulamog and they block it with one of these <laughs> and it turns into a permeating mass. <laughs> Even the mighty Ulamog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, like, I mean, I, it's going to be annoying and, and, like, constructed, but I know unlimited my opponent's, like, definitely going to go turn with permeating mass. I'm going to look at my hand and just go, what? Like, I don't, I, <laughs> You're just gonna go. Well, guess I'm gonna have to figure out a way to win this game with permeating masses. Cause that's what we're gonna be doing, boys. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I think this card is definitely sweet and unique, and uh, someone will find a way to do crazy things to it too. So, oh man. I like it. Yeah, I do too. All right. 
So I don't like this card very much. Spirit of the Hunt. Uh, generic green green for a wolf spirit. 3-3 three, three flash. When it enters the battlefield, each other creature you control, that's a wolf or werewolf, gets plus zero, plus three until end of turn. Uh, I don't know. This just feels like every other green creature with flash that's supposed to be like, quote-unquote, wrath protection. You're, you're not wrong. And I really don't like the way they keep doing the art on these wolf spirits. Like, Spirit of the... Uh, whatever the uncommon one from... Uh, uh, or the light from shadows also like had this weird like it's still got some flesh and it's kind of been eaten and decayed but it's here and it's the, your guardian spirit. I, I mention this card mainly because there are now a ton of green cards with flash in standard. I mean, I, an actual ton of green cards in standard with flash. And I don't remember if you remember a, a deck that existed at the tail end of the original Innistrad format. Dear 